this video, I'm going to give you a process to learn to code that you have never seen before. Unfortunately, most people who learn to code do the completely wrong things. But as someone who has been a programmer for more than three years and who has helped hundreds of people become programmers myself, I have seen the things that work and the things that don't work. So in this video, I'm going to give you a process to learn to code where at the end of this, you will feel angry that you didn't follow this particular process in the first place. And no, I'm not just going to tell you to buy my course. I'm not going to tell you that that's the only way. In fact, this particular process doesn't require any financial investment whatsoever. It's simply based on the science of learning and how our brain actually acquires new skills. And at the end of this process, you are going to be at a point where you can actually code real things rather than just memorizing some random things that you don't even know how to use. You're going to be able to pass interviews. You're going to be able to even build your own startup from scratch if that is what you want to do. And even if not, you're going to be able to build really impressive resume projects that are really going to impress employers. Because when you follow this process, you're going to learn practical skills. You're actually going to know how to coach. You're going to stand out from the competition. So let's get started. The first step is to pick something that you really, really want to go. So that's right. The first step is not picking up some course or some book or anything like that. We're not even learning to code yet. What you simply want to do is really deep deeply think about something where if you imagine that you had all the coding skills in the world, what would you really, really want to build? What would be something super cool where it would be just fun for you to build that thing, to have the coding skills, to make that project into reality. The reason why we do this first is because the goal of learning anything should never be because you just want to have the skill because it sounds cool. It should always be because you want to do something practical with that skill. For example, if you want to learn a language, like I'm learning the language of Indonesian right now, I'm not just running it randomly because it sounds cool to know Indonesian. It's because my girlfriend is Indonesian, it's because I spend a lot of time in Bali in Indonesia, and I want to be able to communicate with the locals. I have a real practical goal on how I want to use this skill, which will keep me going and motivate me to actually learn the skill. And the same with learning the code. You want to think of something you really want to build with it. And sort of throughout this process, what we're going to do is go closer and closer to actually building that project. So the entire framework of learning here is completely different to what you might be used to. We will be thinking about the rest of the process from the point of view of how we can just build the skills so that you can build this thing that you really want to build. And the biggest mistake in this part is not believing in yourself. It's just choosing something super simple because you think that, oh, I would never have the skills to build something like this. This is so complicated. It would take me years to do this. Surely I should pick something simpler. No. Pick exactly what you want, even if it sounds really complex, because you'll be surprised once we start going, how quickly you can actually figure things out with the help of AI and all the other tips and strategies that I'm going to show in this video. And even if it's super complex, just within a couple of months, you will realize that you will actually have the ability to make that thing into reality. It might not be exactly the thing you envisioned at the start, but at least something in that direction. So pick a project. Pick something you want to build and then you can move on to the second step, which is going to be in to install a code editor. Don't think too much about it. It doesn't matter what you pick. You can pick VS Code, you can pick one of the AI code editors. It really doesn't matter. If you can't choose, if you don't know anything, just pick VS Code. It's the most popular one, the simplest one. It's completely free. Just go and download it right now. With that, step number three, open DeepSeek or ChatGPT or some other AI assistant. And what you want to do is type into the AI assistant the exact project that you want to build. Just describe to you briefly what it is that you want to build with code. Again, you're going to have no idea how to do it yet, but just describe the project. And then you're going to ask the AI, how would I build the simplest possible version of this project? That exact sentence, the simplest possible version of this project. You're going to ask it. It's going to give you some kind of instructions that probably right now you're going to have no idea what it's even about. But you're just going to save this chat because this is essentially going to give you kind of a roadmap on what you should start learning. First, so we're going to leave this for a moment. We're going to come back to this chat. So just save it in the chat history of wherever. And then we're going to move on to step four, which is to learn the basics of programming. Now, you might be very surprised that we're in step four and it's only now that we are learning the basics of programming because we've now sort of established the motivation. We sort of established the goal and whatever you're doing, the first thing you're going to need to do is just to learn the basics of how 
coding works, like kind of to understand the lay of the land a little bit. So that then we can start moving towards building this project. So the first thing you're going to need to pick one programming language that's going to be your main programming language throughout this journey. If you don't know what to pick, you're again going to go to that chat from before and ask if it didn't already tell you which programming language would be best to learn if I want to build this project. Then it's going to give you some suggestions. If for whatever reason you again don't know, just pick either JavaScript or Python. Those are going to be the safest choices. And for most projects, those are going to be the languages that it's going to suggest. And then what you're going to want to do is just learn the programming foundations using that language and how you do it really doesn't matter. You can go online. There's a bunch of videos online. I've made videos of this myself. In fact, I have a video Python programming in 30 minutes where I go through the basics of Python in just 30 minutes that will get you started. Or you can even literally ask the AI to teach it for you. That is how good AI is these days. Or if you really want to fast track your process, you can go for a paid program. I have a program called Python Developer Bootcamp where I go through the basics in a lot of detail. That's really going to drill them into your brain. And then obviously I'm going to also teach you intermediate programming going to teach you even advanced programming, specifically in the domain of web development and specifically using the language Python. So if you're using Python and your project is related to the web, you're going to find that course really, really useful. Again, you don't have to do that. Just some people see it as a very worthwhile investment to invest a bit of money to fast track this process. But if you don't want to do that, if you don't have the funds for it, you absolutely don't have to do that. It's just whether you want to spend more time or more money, that's completely your choice. But if you are interested, the program is going to be linked in the first link down below in the description. What you want to make sure is that at the end of this step, you at least know the following. You understand what variables are, you understand what functions are and how to use them, how to make them, how they work, how control flow works. So control flow basically means if else statements, how loops work. So you have for loops, while loops, things like that. And finally, data types. So you have different types of data like strings, integers, booleans, everything like that. You want to learn the basic ones and understand how they work when you use them, things like that. Once you can look at that list, which I'm going to put on the screen and you can say, yes, I understand this. This is very easy. That means you now understand the basics of programming. So you can start building on top of this knowledge to start building something real. And with this knowledge, which is still going to be very, very basic, by the way, what you're going to do is move on to step five, which is to build a simple starting point for your app. So at this point, you might be panicking. You might be, you might be saying, oh my God, I don't know how to do anything. I can't possibly do this. But again, this is where our friend AI is going to come in to help because with this sort of basic idea of how programming works, you have enough knowledge to now ask AI, what would be the first step that I would have to do to build this project? Or how do I get started building this project? So it's going to give you some kind of starting point. It might give you some code even to get started with. And it's going to essentially tell you to build something to essentially start building towards your ultimate project. And at the end of this step, what I simply want you to come up with is even just a blank web page, something that you have on the screen or a code file that simply runs that doesn't ever have to do anything fancy yet, but some kind of a starting point that you can then start building on top of. And by the way, you can even get AI to literally build this for you as long as you understand what the code does, as long as you understand how it works. And at any point throughout this entire process, which even in this step, you're going to face this when you don't understand something, just go study that thing. If, for example, it tells you to run a Python file and you don't understand how to run a Python file, you're going to Google how to run a Python file, how Python files work, or, or ideally, again, you're just going to ask AI. Because the way learning works, according to the science of learning, is that when you're learning something for the specific purpose of immediately applying it to do something real, your brain integrates that information much, much more effectively if you're trying to memorize it when you don't actually care about it, if you don't have any specific purpose for it. And with that, we can move on to step number six, which is to build the first simple version of your project. So essentially, this is a continuation of the last step. What you're going to do is again, every time you don't know what to do, you ask AI, what should I do next? Okay, remembering that North Star, that project that you have in your mind, and it's going to tell you, okay, now you can do this. Now you can do this. And you're just going to essentially follow the instructions. And at any point when you don't understand something, you're going to Take a break, you're going to Google it, you're going to ask AI, you're going to ask it to explain. Make sure that every step of the process, even if it's generated by AI, you understand what is going on. And you will notice that when you do this, you start to have these moments of like, oh, I get it. Oh, this is how it works. And the goal here is to get to the point that you have something on the screen that is the simplest possible version 
of the ultimate thing that you want to build. Let's say you want to build a fitness tracking app. At this step, you might literally just have like a simple form where you can enter your, I don't know, protein and carbs and fats and calories. Or if you're building like a language learning flashcard app, you might have like a very simple flashcard where you can say correct or incorrect or something like that. Just something extremely simple that is moving us towards the ultimate project that you wanted to build again. And once you have that, you want to enter step number seven, which is going to be essentially the rest of your learning journey with programming, which is to enter the learn, build, learn, build loop. What this means is that what you want to do is exactly what you've already been doing is you build something until you get stuck, until you feel like you need more knowledge to keep going. Then you're going to stop. You're going to go learn that thing. You're going to learn the thing that you feel like you need to know to keep going with the project. Again, strictly for the purpose of just keeping going with the project. Then you're going to build the thing with the knowledge that you just learned like five minutes ago. Then you're going to build until you get stuck. You're going to ask AI, you're going to Google, etc., etc., etc. And while you do this, you accumulate knowledge in context of how to build something real. And what's gonna happen is every day, you're gonna build one more feature. You're gonna fix one more bug. You're gonna improve the project just a little bit every day. Just put like two hours every day or something like that. You're, you're just gonna work on this. And you will be surprised how quickly you can make progress. You will be surprised just how much you are going to know in such a short amount of time. Especially if you compare this to, like let's say you tried learning the traditional way of just like watching some videos or reading some books. The amount of time you have to put in using that method versus this method is insane. And you'll be so amazed how quickly you can learn in such a short period of time when you are taking this practice first approach. And by the way, throughout this process, you shouldn't worry about, oh, is my code good? Am I following all the software engineering principles? Is there security vulnerabilities? Because this is just a practice project, only you use it. And all these other considerations like software design principles and all this stuff, only becomes relevant when you're much, much further on in the process. If you start to like publish it to other people. And I mean, to be fair, I've published two apps to actual people. And there's probably a lot of security vulnerabilities that I didn't deal with. Even for the first uses, I only sort of dealt with after I already had paying customers and all these kind of things. So you can actually ignore so much of the traditional software engineering advice. And this is going to get me hate from like purist engineers. But the thing to realize is that no one cares what your code looks like. No one cares about anything. The only thing people would care about, even if you were to give your app to people, is does the code work? Does it do what it needs to do? So don't think about these things. Just think about going towards having the app work, having it do the thing that you want to do. And then after that, you can start learning perhaps about like these more advanced topics. So this is a very startup -y kind of way of learning coding. You're going to feel like an imposter throughout this entire process. It's going to be very, very uncomfortable. But what I realized from building a startup is when I spent six months working on my first startup, where I was literally balls deep coding every single day, I learned more during that six months than I would have probably learned over 10 months of the traditional learning or even working a job at the company where I'm not like as deep in the code every single day. So I encourage you to try this. Let me know in the comments how it works for you. And if you're really struggling for ideas for these projects to build, then go watch this video right here. So watch that video next and I'll see you on the next one.